Section 5.2 is on rational numbers. Um, let's do a little bit of foundational stuff here. A lot of this you probably know. Um, writing mixed numbers and integers as fractions. Uh, remember, if you have a mixed number, you're going to multiply the bottom number, the denominator, times the whole number. Then you're going to add the numerator, and you're going to place it over the denominator. So 8 times 4 is 32. And then 32 plus 3 would be a 35. So I have a 35 over 8. And if this was negative, this is negative. Um, if I do it over here, I have a 12 times a 3. And then I'm going to add the 2. So this is 36 plus 2 more, which is 38 over 3. Now if I have whole numbers to make it into a fraction, I just place it over 1. So that's 10 over 1, and this would be negative 4 over 1. I also have to be able to write terminating decimals as fractions. Terminating decimals are decimals that stop, whether they end in 0 or they end in a repeating number. But the termination is you know the end of it. So like the end of this is 26. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do term I'm gonna do repeating in a minute, but these are ones that have concrete endings to them. So when I have 0.26, that is the same as 26 over 100, because that six is in the hundredths location. So now I have to reduce these to lowest terms, I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2, and it's going to give me a 13 over 50. So 13 over 50 is the fraction of 0.25. Down here, if I have 0.75, the 5 is in the hundredths location, so I'm going to take the 75 and I'm going to place it over 100. I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 25 and it's going to give me a 3 over 4. That is the fraction for 0.75. Over here, notice I have whole numbers and fractions. So I have a 2, and then I have 8, 7, 5, but this time the last number is in the, uh, in the thousandth location. So I am going to have to reduce this. Now I'm going to have a 2, but if I divide the top and the bottom by 25, give me a second, we'll get that done out. Um, let me do it over here on scrap paper. All right, 875 divided by 25 is going to give me a 35 on the top. And 1,000 divided by 25 is going to give me 40 on the bottom. So I have a 2, but if you've noticed, I can still reduce that down more. I would divide the top and the bottom by 5, and then I'm going to get a 2 and 7 eighths. And so that's going to be the mixed numeral, or the fraction, if you want to take it one step further, I guess you could make it into an improper fraction there, um, depending on what the instructions asked you for. So if I wanted to make it improper, that would be 16 plus 7 more. So that's 23 over 8. So either one of those is an okay answer. This one, I'm going to take the negative 2, and then I'm going to put 35 over 100. I'm going to have to divide the top and the bottom by 5. So I'm going to get a negative 2. I'm going to have 7 on the top, and I'm going to have 20 on the bottom. If I want to make it into an improper fraction, remember I go 20 times 2 plus 7. So I'm going to have a negative 47 over 20. All right. These are repeating decimals. Now, I couldn't figure out how to do it on my computer, but they have a line over top of them. 
Anytime you have a repeating decimal and you want to make them into a fraction, instead of placing them over 10, because that's in the tenth position, the tenths place, you're going to subtract one from it. So you're going to place the 3 over the 9 and then reduce that to 1 third. So 1 third is the same as 0 0.3 with a line over it. Same thing here. I've got a line over the 3 and the 9. So I'm going to take the 33 and I'm going to place it over 99. Um, I'm looking that. I can probably divide the top and the bottom by 3 because I always have to reduce if I can. It's going to give me 13 over 33. All right, we are going to begin to classify numbers. And so all of the numbers that we have talked about so far are real numbers. And then we're going to divide them into irrational and rational numbers. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be predicted. So in other words, like pi, 3.14, but you know it continues on and it goes on forever. If you put 3.14 in your calculator, it will go all the way across the window of your calculator, but it would still continue on because it never stops. If you took the fraction 1 7th and you divided it and got a decimal value out of it, it would never stop. It continues on, so you would not know what would come after what the calculator gives you. The calculator gives you 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, but there's another number because it keeps going. It's just the calculator has reached its limit. Well, I don't know if you remember the name of this particular section, but it says rational numbers. So we're going to be over here on this side. We're not going to be talking about irrational numbers. But the very smallest unit of rational numbers is called natural numbers. And that's right in the middle. And it includes 1, 2, 3, blah, 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 blah. It continues on. They're all, all whole numbers, but it doesn't include any numbers smaller than 1. The next unit, and I'll write this one out, is called whole numbers. Whole numbers are everything natural numbers are, except for it also includes 0. You can remember that because the O looks like the 0. Outside the whole numbers, we have integers. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. So, It goes in both directions here. Okay, so now it still doesn't include fractions, still doesn't include decimals, they're still whole numbers. And then rational numbers are like your terminating decimals, your fractions that are going to give you terminating decimals, and your repeating numbers because those right there, I know what's going to come next. They're rational, they're predictable. So a 3 is going to come after that because I have a line over it. So everything that we talk about basically is predictable, whether it's a repeating decimal or whether it's a decimal that terminates, whether they're whole numbers, whether they're integers. So you're going to be using this particular type table, and you're going to classify numbers. So if I have, over here I have a 15 that I'm supposed to classify, the smallest unit I can find 15 in is this natural. So it is natural, whole, integer, and rational. If you were standing in the middle of this circle, you would also be in the middle of this circle, and then in the middle of this circle, and you would be inside this rational box. So 15 is natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. Uh, if you notice on this one, this one says dot, 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 dot. 
I don't know what comes after the three. There's no repeating part. So this is what we would call an irrational number. This one eight, I would have to take the eight and I would have to divide it into the one, the bottom into the top to make a decimal out of a fraction. It's gonna go one time. I'm gonna divide that, it's gonna go two times. And then it's going to come out even. So, one eighth is the same as decimal one, two, five, which makes this a rational, real number. It can't be a natural number because it's not whole. Can't be a whole number because it's not whole. Can't be an integer because it's not whole. But it falls out here which makes it a rational number. Now if I have this one, notice that this repeats. So this too is a rational number. And if it's rational, all of these that we talk about are real. Okay, it won't be until you get to Algebra 2 probably that we really, really study imaginary numbers. You might hit it in Algebra 1. Alright, your homework for this section is page 208. 13 through 41 odd.